Hello everyone and welcome back to Mossy Pine Ranch at Elm Creek. We have reached episode number 37 and are still in November. That's right, at the end of last session we were finishing off our sunflower harvest. We got that all harvested and also mulched up and we sprayed herbicide on our barley field and got rid of those pesky weeds and in doing so we rented this Massey Ferguson sprayer and I asked a question at the end just to see whether we should keep this because uh, we leased it um, and if we did keep it trade it in for our Coverland sprayer or just simply keep using the Coverland sprayer and return this. I had a couple of answers one from Henry of Green Tea and also from Feldin who thought this seems to match the ranch quite well and it also means because it's self-propelled we don't need to use the tractor as much and that can be used for something else. So yeah I think we are going to be keeping this rather special Massey Ferguson sprayer. So yeah first thing I need to hop in it and deposit the herbicide and then someone from the dealership will be coming to run it back so they can sort out the necessary paperwork uh, so rather than leasing it we are then going to own it and we can then trade in the Converlin sprayer. So that's the herbicide dropped off and then we'll just plonk the sprayer here so someone can come and pick it up. There we go, Jeff from the dealership has just come to pick it up and he's running it back for us. He's going to sort out the paperwork for ownership. In the meantime we're going to jump in the case and take the Coverland sprayer back to sell. Where is the case? Ah, here it is. There we've got the sprayer attached. Now I'm a little bit disappointed about taking this back but there is something special about that Massey and it also runs faster than uh, when we've got this Coverlin sprayer on the tractor. It's uh, empty so uh, we can go and take it straight to the dealership. Just about caught up with Jeff and uh, we're gonna zip off to the left, stay out of his way so we can go and return the sprayer. And we can sell the main sprayer for 31,000 and the tank for 3,600. So Jeff has just arranged that all for us and we've purchased the sprayer for $42,000. So yeah, not bad at all. And yeah, better get someone to drop the case back at the ranch. Off they go. So let's jump in the Massey and we can get this back to the ranch. And it is Mossy Pine Ranch ownership. Right, back at the ranch, helper has also brought the case back, so let's just get the new sprayer parked up. There we go. Lovely. So, one of the reasons for staying in November is the eggs are now at the best price and we have a whole load of eggs stashed up ready to be sold so I'm just going to grab the pallet trailer and we'll take that over to where the chicken coop is we can get the eggs loaded up and I've just checked that the best price is over by the fast food restaurant so we can get them sold today on the best sell price and whilst we're over there we are going to be selling our bread tomorrow uh, we've produced as much bread as we can from the bakery and yeah the bakery have given us a call and said we need to come and pick it up because we're completely blocking their loading bay and unloading bay so yeah let's go grab some eggs get them to the fast food restaurant and on the way back we can pick up our bread and we'll just store it in the truck overnight until we can sell it tomorrow around we go and yeah we've got quite a bit of honey stored up as well might have to check when we can sell that let's do a quick loop so we can reverse in to the chicken area right let's get this reversed up okay if we open the curtain we should be in range to pick up all the egg pallets
There we go, that's all full, 25,956 litres. Chickens have done really well this year. So let's press on and we can get this over to the fast food restaurant. Right, I thought I'd driven past it and I had. It is here on the right. So yeah, let's line up and we can get all of this deposited. Open up the curtain. And unload. Wow. Now, it's sold in two parts. 66,000 and I think 44,000. So yeah, looking at the money, I think we've made around $100,000 on eggs. Let's just check the screen. So, sold products, and we've only sold eggs today, $108,924. Wow, that is a payday and a half. Can't wait to see what we're going to get for the bread. So let's close up the curtain and head on over to pick it up, and then we'll just take it back to the ranch for safekeeping until it's ready to sell tomorrow. Right, bakery is just here. It's only a small property but let's turn in and yeah I think we'll be able to see our bread wowzers that is a lot of bread and they weren't joking when they said we were completely blocking their loading bay that is blocked entirely right hazards on let's get all this bread loaded up crikey 21,000 litres of bread that is pretty good going let's close her up and yeah we'll just take this back to the ranch and we can sell it tomorrow can't wait to see how much we're going to get bit of a tight pickup but we are away and hopefully not going to smash into anyone brilliant well I think it's safe to say that uh, productions uh, and you know eggs oil and I know bread sells for good money as well, they are all worth it. So if you haven't explored productions yet, it definitely is a good way to make money. You just have to be a bit more patient because it's not readily available. It's taken us quite a while to make this bread. We of course had to turn our oats from the last harvest into flour, and then we had such a large amount of flour, it took almost a whole year to produce all of that bread. back at the ranch and yeah we'll keep the trailer under the vehicle shelter just to keep it safe overnight don't want anyone stealing our bread and we can come back tomorrow and pick it up there we go the bread is all nice and safe in the trailer overnight right next and last job for today November is taking another run of silage down to the BGA because it's running a bit low and we're near 83,000 litres to be able to take a full load down there so let's take the cover off start loading up might have to wait a little while for it all to be ready but uh, yeah we'll take it down there before the day end and start filling So we've had to wait for a full load and that's taken us up to half seven. So it's now dark, but we can now head over to the BGA and get this all dropped off. And what's nice about this is uh, we can get the lights on the truck and see it in all its uh, lit up glory with the trailer. So yeah, let's head over to the BGA and get that stocked up. made it to the BGA so let's swing round and get this dropped off in it goes superb so we can run back to the ranch now and then I think it's bedtime until tomorrow where we're going to be getting on with selling our bread and then we've also got to do some field prep in field number 10 
uh, that involves spreading digestate now that it's all mulched up doesn't need lime so yep just digestate spreading ready for drilling in the next year back at the yard and we can get parked up and have a nice rest in readiness for tomorrow's bread sale so let us switch off and lights out good morning it's a crisp december at 9 a.m and we've hitched up to our trailer with the bread in and i've just checked the prices and oddly enough it's now saying january is the best price for bread at 5265 but if we have a look at the current prices the johnson's farmer market is already above that at 5640 and the benefit of the johnson's farms market is it's literally just across the road over there so let's just take the small and slow idle journey over there and i can't wait to see how much we're going to get for this bread we have some silage funds that have come in overnight so we're at 995 k dollars so we are about to become millionaires okay so let's open up the curtain and we can get our lovely bread unloaded at the farmer's market and there we go sold in two batches again the first being sixty-two thousand dollars let's have a look at how much we got in total and it's another whopping payday a hundred and eighteen thousand dollars from our bread that is amazing so we are now millionaires we've got one million one hundred and fourteen thousand dollars in the ranch bank account that is really going to help with the growth in uh, the next year it's a very early christmas present for us so uh, yeah just turn the engine off in excitement but let's get it back on and over to the ranch because the next job is turning attention to the field prep now i do want to buy a new area um, but i will save that for the new year and that's because I want to see if the farmer who currently owns it is going to put another crop in the other field. There's two fields of the plot that we want to buy and it's right next to our ranch property already. So yeah, we will be buying that in the new year and hopefully it'll have some crops full in it. But yep, yeah, there's the digestate spreader and we are first of all going to need to get some digestate. So I've got the tanker there, we'll park up the pallet trailer and we'll do a couple of runs back and forth from the BGA to pick up some digestate. And I'm also thinking that I'm going to upgrade the slurry spreader, digestate spreader, not by uh, size or capacity, but by width. Um, so I am going to buy a uh, hose attachment for the rear so we can expand the working width. So yeah, first of all, let's get some digestate. Pallet trailer unloaded. Tanker trailer loaded. Off to go get some digestate.
There we go. We have done two trips to the BGA to bring, bring back Digestate. So, yes, yeah, 67,000 litres odd in each tanker. And we have filled up this slurry pit. Yeah, that's got 100,000. We added a bit more to the slurry pit over by the sheep and horses. And then, of course, we've got a tank load as well. So we've got plenty to go around. And uh, I think there's around 100,000 litres left at the BGA. Yep, 106,000 litres at the BGA. The silage has completely run down now, but if we take a look at the fermenting silo, we've still got another uh, seven odd thousand to process before we've got a full load. So that gives us enough time to do the digestate spreading, and then we can do another trip to the BGA uh, last of all. So let's hop in the case and get the Zunhammer. There she is, the ranch workhorse. And yep, yeah, I'm Gonna get the Zunhammer spreader, sprayer, slurry sprayer. Can't remember what you call it, but uh, tend to interchange the words. But you know what I mean. And yet yeah, we are going to go get some hoses from the dealership. I think this Zunhammer does around 15 meters of width, and there's some hoses that are going to extend that a little bit further. And I do wonder whether the hoses help with the quantity that it ends up going through obviously spraying around all over the place means that uh, you are probably going to have more wastage whereas through the hoses you're likely to get a more accurate coverage so let's get over to the dealership and uh, yeah, we're doing this job in December because um, it's okay to sort of get the slurry or digestate over the field and yeah the winter weather will We'll rain it into the ground but the ground is probably too hard for us to do either plowing or cultivating and we certainly can't drill anything this time of year so yep just field prep for now and then in the new year we'll be making tracks towards getting some new crops in turning into the dealership and let's have a look at the hoses So this is our Zunhammer, and you can see it's got a 14.8 metre width when we're just spraying it out the back. It's got 18,500 litre capacity, so that's pretty good. It does recommend a uh, hose, uh, the Zunhammer Vibro, but that's only 6.2 metres, so that would be a downgrade. So I'm thinking of trying one of the Bowmech. Now, there's this one, for, which is 30 metres, that's way too big. Um, we might be able to upgrade the the slurry spreader at some point in the future, but I don't want to do that just yet. So for now, let's get a hose that seems to be suitable. And this 21 meter uh, Bowmech Multi Profi 21 slash 15 seems to fit the bill. So this is it, $69,500, quite expensive. It's not an offer, so we're gonna to have to pay full price we got more than enough in the bank balance and this is going to extend it from 14.8 to 21 meters so a fair gain in my point of view so let's go ahead and buy that there's the hose so what we need to do is back up and pick it up using the attacher that's on the back of the Zunhammer there There we go, so we can attach it, and as you can see, it looks to be a perfect fit. It runs up just about four-fifths of the tank, and does attach quite nicely. It's not built for this slurry spreader, but nonetheless, um, we'll give it a go, and hopefully it works uh, in an optimal way. Let's get back to the ranch, fill up with digestate, and we can get spraying underway now these hoses don't match the Zunhammer perfectly but there is a little bit of bluey turquoise that seems to match the turquoise pipe of the Zunhammer so yeah I'm quite happy with it let me know what you think back at the ranch and we can get the Zunhammer filled up
There we go. Beacons off. And let's get into the field. Now I have just been having a bit of a play. As you'll see, we're down to 83% digestate. That's because when I was sort of getting ready to unfold and spread, the mechanism wasn't really compatible. So if we turn on layer away, we can see that it starts spraying and yeah, it's not using the hoses as it should. And um, I've tried a few different things, unattaching it, attaching it. So unfortunately, this set of Bomec hoses is not compatible with our Zunhammer. I thought it was uh, going to be, but it's a shame, but never mind. We will have to just drop it off for now and yeah, reevaluate our options the next time we do digestate spraying. So let's just plonk that off there and we'll get topped off back to 100% again and we can get underway with our digestate spraying. If anyone knows uh, sort of what was wrong there and uh, can give me some points or tips then feel free to drop me a comment. I'm not the uh, most knowledgeable about slurry spreaders um, and yeah if you've got any suggestions for the next upgrade for slurry spreaders obviously we're getting some big fields now we're going to get even more fields so we're probably going to need to upgrade it but uh, yeah just let me know we'll have to return those hoses after we've done this job so let's uh, switch on and do it the old-fashioned way just spraying it out the back so yeah get this all covered up just single application rate to give it the primary level of fertilizer and thanks to our new seed drill, the Horsch, we can apply the secondary level of fertilizer when we drill the crops in. Or, depending on what crop we choose, we might opt for a new planter that is going to direct plant and fertilize at the same time. I have seen a few. Nordic and I have just used a fantastic John Deere planter in our Calmland series. I'll try not to use the same one, um, there are a couple of others which are a bit more expensive so if we can push the budget out that far then we will. But yep I'm all ears as to what crops you think we should put in next. I did have an idea for this field but I'm not going to suggest it. I'll uh, see if we get any nice suggestions from you the viewer. But I'm going to get busy with this and probably have to refill a few times. But I'll see you when we're done.
last slither here that we just couldn't quite nab. But yeah, that is all digestate spread. Now there were a few patches that uh, I did ensure that I covered, but uh, seemingly I think the texture on them is a little bit off. It didn't cover with uh, digestate and that's probably because we either missed when we planted or drilled and uh, yeah it just doesn't allow us to cover that section but that's all field 10 spread now which is fantastic oh god watch out for the gnarly elm creek drivers but yeah that's all spread up and ready for the winter rain and moisture to draw that into the soil and uh, will help with fertilizing the next crop so i think we can leave well, no, we can't leave the Zunhammer there because we need to take the hoses back to the dealership. Very unfortunate that uh, these didn't work, but such is the uh, name of the game with Farming Simulator. Some stuff isn't compatible, although it seemingly is, so always important to field test the stuff you try to make sure it's fit for purpose. But uh, yeah, we should be able to get not... Uh, not sale price back for this but uh, close enough we only had it a short while so uh, yeah we should be able to sell it and only lose out on a small amount of money the hose is reattached and we are going to run to the dealership to sell this off and then after that we're going to do a run to the BGA with a uh, full trailer of silage from the fermenting silo and that's going to top the funds up even more but that is it for today finishing at 2 30 in december and this is the last episode of the game year so yeah when we come back in the next session will be at some point in the new year probably march um but we'll see got to keep the animals well kept over winter with feed and warmth and water so yeah i'll be taking care of them but uh, the usual winter pause on the crop part of the ranch and we'll resume in spring when we can start getting our next crops in we will have to uh, yeah, buy our new area of land see what crops we've got in them probably have to top up with fertilizer on those because the uh, other farmers around here tend not to look after the crops too much and they don't maximise the yield. Yeah, we will see what the new year has in store for Mossy Pine Ranch. But yeah, at least today we've sold a lot of produce, eggs and bread. We are the egg and bread barons of Elm Creek and we've made our first million dollars in the ranch bank account, which uh, is a fantastic achievement. And yeah, 37 episodes in, that is pretty good. And yeah, of course, we've got the Field 10 spread ready to rock and roll next year. Yeah, hope you have enjoyed watching. If you have, remember to drop a like. And if you've got any tips, tricks or things you'd like me to do, feel free to leave a comment. All there's left to say is, hope to see you again next time. And until then, catch you later. Cheers all. Bye bye.